first started in 1974, it was a merger of about three or four little cores in the area. Many names to choose from. Uh, they chose the Crossman. It was a selection of the members uh, with the administration. That was the name that they wanted. Uh, the history of the Corps is uh, now we're going into like 27 years, 26, 27 years of history. Through the 90s, a lot of success, a lot of energy is notated for the Corps through what they did in the 90s, their relationship with jazz, and then picking up with that into 2000 and 2001, uh, with myself becoming director in 2000. So I think that's a lot of it in terms of performance and style. But if there's anything, it's a, it's a commitment and a perseverance to, of the Crossmen to survive, to thrive, and to grow. They want to do what is great for them, but also what is enjoyable for the audience. And uh, over the last couple of years, I think it's been fairly clear that uh, more so than many other cores currently uh, on the field, the Crossmen want to entertain the audience. Well, they've, uh, they've exceeded all of our expectations as a staff. Um, <clears throat> well, they were very talented uh, when, when we got them, but uh, just, uh, just uh, comparing um, back when we heard them in November, it's just miles improvement. And they really, really have uh, gone further than we could ever have dreamed of. We're really pleased with uh, their, their progress this year. I hope that for them, that we've given them a little more than what they expected. Uh, we drove them to be able to do things that they didn't assume that they could do. And I think some of them may not realize it until they get home, you know, and they go to their band rehearsal at college or at high school, and then they realize that this is easy. Because all summer we put them a notch above the average, a few notches above the above average. I think uh, they're probably one of the strongest performing groups in the country. The main goal for the season was best crossman ever. Um, whether scores or placements determine that, I think in some ways they probably are the best crop. They um, maybe not rehearse as hard as I like, but when they get to the field at night, it's it's like click. You know, it's like here we are. They're performers. Through this year, um, I think they're wonderful. They are a great group of kids. Um, just super throughout the whole year. Um, I've, saw, I've seen the show in the beginning and I've seen, I've gone to almost all the camps and everything so I've gotten to see it from the start and, and now almost to the finish and it's just, it's an amazing, amazing thing to see. They knew in the winter that they were better than they had ever been. They could sense it, they could hear it, they could feel it. It had a lot to do with a lot of returning members. Uh, the most returning members of Horn Lines had many, many, many years. Um, they they knew it then, they knew December, January, February, that this could be something very special. For someone who doesn't know, I think the one thing that I say to all my friends back home is drum corps is like the NFL of marching bands without the woodwinds. It's basically the highest echelon of, of the outdoor activity you can possibly find. Drum corps is the place where somebody can achieve something that is really amazing. Uh, we just use a certain uh, compulsory set of uh, tools like drums, horns, dance, and uh, put these things together and you can really achieve something pretty great. Drum corps to me is probably youth. That's what it means to me. It means, it means youth. I grew up doing it from when I was nine years old to now and uh, no matter what kind of gigs I had, if I was on the road playing with Aerosmith or Bon Jovi or Tower Power, I've always tried to make time to come back and give back to the activity. It's it really entertainment, and I think people will forget that most of the time, at least the people who are in drum corps. Uh, it's more about the theatrics and the entertainment because we have an audience, and whenever you have an audience, it's, you know, it becomes entertainment even if it's not intended to be that. Drum Corps is for insane people only. <laughs> we, we all come together and uh, we travel the country and we pay lots of money to do it, to work as hard as we've ever worked in our entire lives, but the end result is definitely enough of a payoff. I'd say that it's hell. That's what I would put it in one word. Hell. Hell. <laughs> Um, I think it's not that bad. It's, it takes a lot of hard work, um, dedication, a lot of time, and um, it can also be a lot of fun. Yeah, it can be fun. I, I'll give her that. You get frustrated, you know, and you, you get 
you get mad at the staff and you get mad at the people around you, but you you know in the end that you're working for one goal, and it's it's a great feeling. The drum corps is family. It's family and working hard to get something done. All right, drum corps is a lot of hard work, and it's also a lot of fun. Like if you look at it both ways it's like the dichotomy of both it's kind of like the yin and the yang kind of a thing the best part about it is the fact that you go through and you have 128 135 people that you've become friends with and you can honestly say that um, if I went to their hometown or their home state that they would put you up and they would help you out it's like having a family away from a family but it's like a 135 member family it's the experience to tell you what drum corps is and what we do on the field the easiest way to say is to make a relationship to a very good marching band. But the experience of drum corps is the tour. It's the eight weeks of traveling. It's the eight weeks of working together. It's the eight weeks of bonding, uh, good days and bad days. Uh, it's the tour that makes the difference. Drum corps to me is one of the most amazing things I think you could ever do because you take 135 people that probably wouldn't get along in real life. Put them together on a bus, on a rehearsal field, in a gym for three months. Tell them you gotta do this, you gotta do this at certain times. You, they live together, they eat together, they sleep together, they breathe together. You have every soap opera problem that could be imagined. But on, all, on top of all that, you ask them to be the best in the world at what they do, and they do it.
joined Crossman uh, because one of my friends was like, I really want to go, and I have, and I had been watching drum corps since I was like 10 years old, and it's a great activity, and I really loved it, and I always thought it was professional, and then finally someone explained to me it wasn't, and so I was like, okay, I'll check it out, and that's why I went. First drum corps show I ever saw, I was in. Uh, I joined the corps uh, with a friend, actually two friends, and uh, it was a. Uh, you know, it just sucked me in, really. I would say it's the time of a life. Do it. Why? Why is it the time of your life? Um, because you never get an opportunity to spend your whole summer with 135 people working for one common goal and trying to be the best, basically. Striving for perfection, knowing that you'll never get there. With all the hard work and practice that you do all day, it makes you not want to do it, but then, like, the last week, you look back and, you know, thank yourself for doing it. It's an experience that far too less people you know get it's kind of like I would consider being in drum corps and, and performing in front of these crowds and getting the crowd responses that you get uh, equal to being a uh, starting quarterback on the high school football team or being the point guard of, of the basketball team you're the man in drum corps everybody's the man everybody has to know every nuance of every part of the music that you're playing I think I think it's a wonderful experience for anyone. I think it's a great learning experience and it teaches most of all, I think, hard work and perseverance to get up and to do this every day. The people, I love it. it this place is like no other core. Why? The history and the alumni keep coming back and taking care of us and just like, there's a feeling, a real sense of family here that you just don't get anywhere else. Uh, well, actually, originally I wasn't going to come back this year. Uh, I was going to just do it for th for the one year last year, and uh, then I went to the banquet in December, and I saw all the friends that I had made, and we watched the tour video, and just the, it's the experience of, of pushing yourself to the ultimate physical limit. People have tried to, to uh, get me to go other places, but I always knew that, I mean, I, I never could leave here because Bones is too far in me, you know, like, it's part of me, and I can't, I could never see myself anywhere else, and it was, it's, it's a tradition thing and it's, it's part of who I am and the people here and what we've made in the past and what we can make in the future, that's definitely like why I didn't ever want to leave. It's definitely the spirit of the Crossman that brings me back.
I need you to make sure that crunch cord is intense. Watch the opening focus of it. And bump, ba ba da ba da ba ba da. Make sure we're lining that up no matter what tempo I take it. One, two, one, two. Ready? And. Because a baby's life has been revoked The bond is broke Got so choke up and focus on the close up Mr. Wills I can't reform No God like Hocus Pocus So don't sit back, kick back And watch the world get pushed Rack news and ten your neighborhood is under attack Put away the crack before the crack Put you away You need to be there when your baby's old enough to relax I have a question for you, Tex. Now, who would win in a fight? Gumby or Pac-Man? Oh, Pac-Man, most definitely. Pac-Man would just eat him. He'd just eat his arms and legs. But you don't understand. You ever see in the beginning of Gumby when he falls down and he spreads into like a hundred Gumbies? He's, in, he's invincible. Well, he can a, clone himself. That is a good point. He has the power of cloning. That is a good can point. Can Pac-Man clone himself? Can, oh, can, can, can he clone himself? Probably not. He's he's three lives. Lives. He so Gumby. Gumby would definitely win over Pac-Man in a fight. Gumby would win. Gumby. Gumby. But Pac-Man, you're going down, Pac-Man. Better watch out.
passes. Ah, ah, ah. Three passes. Ah, ah, ah. Four passes. Ah, ah, ah. Five passes. Ah, ah, ah. Six passes. Ah, ah, ah. Seven. Seven passes. Seven passes. We've gone through seven buses in one year. This is bus number seven that we're going to be working on. Grassline uh, has been going through buses like crazy. We had a manual bus where the bus driver didn't know how to drive. We had a bunch of other buses where a guy turned up the heat to 92 degrees. It was great. All right, I think the most common misconception about Crossman is that we're a drum and bugle corps. Well, true, we spend about a fourth of our time out in the field rehearsing and playing and performing, but most of our time is actually loading stuff. We are actually a uh, moving service that you can hire any time of the year, any part of the country. We've been to all of them. And uh, we will move all your craft uh, between buses. Anything, we can strip a bus down in about 45 seconds now. We're so good. So you just call Crossman at 1-800-B-R-O-K-E-N-B-U-S uh, -E -B -E -B and we'll come right to your service. All I wanted to do was get on the bus for a nice ride to Buffalo. Now I got someone's dirty laundry stuck here. Say something. <laughs> Say something. Don't embarrass me in front of the camera. Stop taking around. your crescendo the endings to your crescendos are not matching we've got too many individuals popping out the show is flying home, definitely, um, because I have the most fun. I, I can kind of relax and enjoy myself and perform. Even though it's my least favorite part to practice is that in the opener, whenever we pick up our blue flags for the ending flag feature in the opener, is that's probably my favorite part. My favorite part of the show is um, any part I'm not playing, like uh, the whole thing. I don't play at all the whole show. I just stand around. <laughs> no, seriously, I like... Um, Letter G in Fire Dance, that's my favorite part when the Sopranos are playing. Uh, the beginning, because I could do whatever I want. Uh, my favorite part of the show would probably be A to C in Flying Home. The ending from J to the end, because that the, we had the whole, part, the whole show setting up the late night jazz feel, and that is where we start 
it's circling, it gets faster, and it just builds to the end. It's a great finale. And uh, every time we play it, I kind of get chills. And uh, I really like that part. Right near the end, after the soprano quartet. I swing my horn down, I have to throw it back up, and it feels like it's going to fall off my shoulder. I think that's pretty cool. My favorite part of the show has definitely got to be the part in Fire Dance, Letter G, when the sopranos go, uh, ba -ba -da -ba -ba -da 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 -ba -da 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 it's a great part. Sounds awesome. My favorite part of the show would be fire dance because I'll let you have it. And you? Um, my favorite part of this show is flying home because we do a lot of dance and interpretive body and I make up my own work. <laughs> I'm never right, so I make up my own stuff and I look good doing it. <laughs> On the staff, for me personally, I would have to say probably Keith because he broke me of my bad habits without being a total jerk about it and I've definitely improved and I think he's hysterical so I've had a great time with him this summer. Uh, on the staff would probably be Ron Coleman. Uh, he, he's the one who he always notices if I'm a little down every day and he'll stop me and are you okay, yeah, what's up, and he'll, he'll, he'll give me a, a little inspiration to, to keep pushing hard that day. I think for me is the Contra Visual Tech Ron Coleman. Is he's done a lot to inspire me and help me to reach my personal best and develop my own marching and uh, playing skills. Oh, Trisha. Um, she she just gets me to stretch. You know, sometimes she just can't stretch in the morning, and when she just stretches, it just gets me going. It gets me going in the morning. Yeah, I think Lopez because he wants us to be so good, and he trains us so well. And I mean, there's days whenever you just don't want to do it, but he pushes you through it with him just yelling at you. And then, I mean, it all at the end, it's just gonna be great. Uh, be Dean. Um, he's just phenomenal. Uh, he knows so much. I wish I knew, I knew half as much as he did. He just, and he teaches so well. I mean, he's so much fun to be, to be around. Um, I would say Philip. Philip, definitely. Um, our flag tech. He's not here right now. He left for the week. We love him. Yeah. I Even though him. he calls me Sherry, I still love him. <laughs> definitely Al Chez. He's definitely most influential because uh, without Al, we wouldn't have the edgy tone that the Sopranos have. That's a hard one. The, bra the whole brass staff has been great. Like, I've learned so much from them this year in terms of playing and just everything. So I'm going to have to cop out and say the whole brass staff. To me, I'd have to say it'd be Dean because he makes, he makes us fun, he's patient, and he's a good teacher. I think it'd be Dean as well. I'm such a better player because of him. I never thought I could be this good of a... I think, uh, I think Jason Bentley because he's the... Uh, he gives us all the great info on how to be a quality field lining crew. Like, we lined, this one time we lined a perfect field, our first one of the season. And I said, Jason, the field today is perfect. And he said, man, that just makes me want to buy you stuff. And I said, that's cool. I'd say Gary. Uh, Gary is like the epitome of the crossman. He like lives it, breathes it. Uh, you know, I think if you say the crossman, first thing I think of is Gary. And my description of jump court is this, sleeping on a gym floor with 135 people and all their stuff. Yeah, drum corps. Good morning, Crossman. This is your lucky day. It's driver's breakfast. Breakfast is held on the morning of uh, finals competition, and the drivers pull their money and get all kinds of junk food for the stu for the kids to have breakfast. And we wake them up with pots and pans and cymbals crashing, and they come out and they eat ice cream on waffles and chocolate syrup and chocolate covered peanuts and all kinds of good food like that. The volunteers and everything, all the people that, that come together for the Crossman, it's amazing to see. You'll walk out to the kitchen truck and there'll be people that you haven't seen in years out there just helping out and just 
trying to, to push the Corps along. And that's basically what everyone does. I mean, from our staff members to our volunteers, it's just, it's a big unity. I volunteer because Drum Corps became a big part of my life many years ago. And it's so true that you hear people say that no matter uh, how many years you're in the activity, the people that you meet become family members and uh, you're always around to help your family members. In Webster's Dictionary, there's a picture under stupid and there's my picture. Uh, <laughs> I enjoy it. Uh, it's a vacation for me. It's, um, which some people say, you know, that's kind of a dumb vacation, but it's, you enjoy dealing with the kids. One reason, of course, is my son's on tour. It gives me the opportunity to check on him throughout the tour. And I think it uh, kind of helped uh, our bonding a little bit. He's always busy with his activities, but uh, um, I can just pick out a few instances where I've been with him on tour and very seldom at home does he say, hey, dad, come on over, let's sit down and we'll kind of talk. A couple of times he's cornered me, he said, Dad, you done with cooking? I said, sure, Charlie. And we just kind of go in a corner and we just kind of talk. To be able to see kids move from one place to another, from one goal to another, is just very, very satisfying. Uh, I'm off during the summer. Kids keep me young. Um, being able to go to different places and be around music. I'm a musician's daughter and I've always been around music and find it to be a wonderful combination of music and kids. So we're here in Buffalo, New York at uh, Ralph Wilson Stadium and we're here for the age-out ceremony of uh, 2001 DCI. Now what's going to happen is people that are over the age of 21, possibly age 22, if they're born after a certain date, actually have this Olympic style graduation type ceremony where all their hard work and efforts are rewarded with a big huge gala ceremony and the younger members of the Corps actually, you know, serenade them with a tune called America of Canada and it's very, very loud. Every single horn player in DCI will be up in the stand playing this and it's very, very emotional. And tonight it should be extra emotional because we have a special guest conductor. on my aspect visually, uh, we were running them around the field for an hour and a half every day for the first three weeks, three and a half weeks, and that was just to, to build up their strength and their stamina. And so they've lasted through the summer at points when I assumed that they would break down, 
they were still looking really good, and I was impressed with how they approached themselves. Oh, I mean, progressed an incredible amount, uh, both in not just uh, proficiency on their instruments, but in just maturity. These uh, individuals in this core are working at an unbelievable pace this year. They are pulling uh, performances out of themselves that I think is beyond their limits, and I think that's part of what all this drum corps is about, pushing yourself to make each individual better. And if each individual is performing beyond his capability, then the whole rises. Oh, they've, they've come a really long way. Um, when we first started, like, as a drum line, um, we, we were really coming off a rough season last year. Um, we had a new um, instructors come in this year and kind of build up the drum line to where it used to be in the past. So I'd say from a scale of 1 to 10, they've, they've really progressed. I'd give it like a 10, man. They've, they've been working hard, have come a long way from where they were last year. We've progressed vast amounts. Uh, we had a great winter. Uh, the first time ever that there was more than a full horn line at a, at a winter audition camp. And, uh, everything just everything turned out great. Everybody really was into it. I think they've progressed a tremendous amount. We had a lot of people from a lot of different areas and different techniques. And I think for the color guard, that's a huge thing. People from the Midwest and the East Coast and just different techniques, different backgrounds coming all together. So then our challenge is to unify them and make them into one group to be the crossmen. I could see that this group was going to be very good. I didn't expect them to be this good. It's honestly, for my caption, which is visual, uh, it is probably the best marching drum corps I've ever seen on the field. Let me tell you something, we have achieved every one of our goals that we set out to do with the Crossman this year, especially the first year being here with a uh, bunch of new kids, uh, new staff, they have done everything we've ever asked them and have exceeded our goals for the season. I feel that it's by far one of the furthest moving uh, cores I've ever been associated with. Um, we had a good, we had good talent, but getting it together and getting it to the extreme level that they're at right now, um, we've made leaps and bounds. It's been incredible. The uh, the growth that you guys have experienced has just been unbelievable and actually touching to me. My name is Eric Posner. And I'm Emily Fleck. And we're the drum majors for the Crossman Drum and Bugle Corps from Newark, Delaware and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Our corps director is Mr. Jeff Bridges. And our 2001 program is entitled Late Night Jazz. We hope you enjoy the show.
The Crossman, under the direction of Jeff Bridges. I spent a year, all season, to define that moment on the last night as to what the Crossman should be, again and forever. This season, you have spent an entire year setting a new standard, a new precedent for all Crossmen that follow you. <coughs> for anyone who walks through the door, whoever wears the cross, you have set a standard for what the best Crossman ever shall ever be. And as the Crossman, the 2001, you are the best I've ever had. You have worked the hardest I've ever seen. And I appreciate every moment that you have given all of us. And every show and every performance and everything that you've done all year long. Each and every one of you is outstanding, <laughs> has grown, and have learned a new love. Hold that dearly in your hearts forever. Hold it in your hearts and hold it in your mind, because those are the only memories that you'll ever need. About what you did, why you did it, and was it worth it? Only you will always know that in your heart and your mind, because you're the only one who would walk the walk. An outstanding, wonderful, exceptional punctuation to the end of a beautiful and wonderful year. Thank you very, very, very much. I believe you all know what it means, how it feels, and where you start. And you know definitely shown how to fit. Another good year. I'm glad to have this year alone. It was a good year. We worked hard every day. No regrets this time. That's what it's all about. Mwah. I'm done. I think drum corps has a lot of life lessons. And if you go at it seriously, then you can learn a lot of these. And it's a good way to get a good start on life, as well as uh, give you the opportunity to perform in front of many, many people and affect their lives. Um, the phrase, bones, uh, the bones last forever, uh, is definitely true. Uh, this is the one drum corps I've ever, only drum corps I've ever seen where every member feels like a member no matter what day of the year it is. And uh, I'm glad that I'm a member and, I'm, and I hope that everyone can feel that same feeling that I do because the, because the, bones, are, the bones do last forever. Give it everything you've got every minute because the feelings and the memories that you get here you won't get anywhere else and you won't realize that until you're gone. I think uh, I am very proud of every one of the growth of every one of you guys and uh, we've definitely fought through some battles this year and uh, I think in the end we've won every single one of them so way to go guys. Always value your friendships that you gained here and they will never leave. Never let anybody set your limits for you. Only you can set how excellent you can be and never be afraid to raise the bar to another level. I would have to say that I am so proud of the core. <laughs> and I never thought that I would feel this way, and I do. Do everything a thousand percent. Run back to every set, run off the field to water breaks, run back on the field, rehearse by yourself at night at the truck after a show, live up every opportunity with your friends and laugh as much as you can on the bus, Thank every staff member for what they've given you, for what you've taken from them. Hold your horn up five minutes before you go to bed every night during spring training. It gets a hell of a lot easier. Um, write home and write to friends as much as you can. Realize that there is true beauty in six to fives backwards because you know what? That ain't normal. Normal people don't do that. But to have 64 players plus the symbols, God bless them, doing that same, same thing, sweating and yelling out the cross and counts, that's unbelievable. Cherish what you're a part of, do everything a thousand percent, and I guarantee you, when you walk away from drum corps like I'm walking away tonight, no regrets.
through the age outs, I believe that it's nothing more than thank you. Their commitment, the guys who have been here for a while, who have built the Corps, who have stayed with us through our transition of new administration and staff over the last two or three years, um, they're the ones that have been able to pass on to all the new people coming in what it is to be a crossman, to understand what that means, to grasp a hold of communication the way that they have. They've been outstanding leaders. To everyone else, the commitment to be the best crossman ever. You've stayed on it, you've driven yourself, you have pushed each other, you've helped each other, you picked each other up from a bad day. Take all the things that you've learned from the summer, continue to apply them to your life. As I've told you all here, never back off, never take a step backwards. Keep pushing forward and making yourself better every day. Keep getting up, going to work, and everything that you want out of life is there for you to take, is there for you to have, is there for you to grab. It's your, it's your control. If you decide to come back and march another 10 years, or if you're aging out, or if you decide that it's not for you and you don't want to come back, just don't forget. No matter what happens, forever, every single one of you is a crossman. Don't ever forget that.